and he invited me to the shorts shorts festival and i've I, have y'all seen the the content from that oh yeah i watched that live man it was great and so we me and my band maybe went uh we didn't know what to expect um and so when i went and i saw this festival i'm telling you me and you know my my bandmate dave chapman we were like oh oh no this is people didn't know about this people aren't allowed it like we like i shouldn't like i just came off of this off of an invite i should have knew about this before like i i should have been <laughs> running to chris and saying yo you need to let me end, end these doors like experiencing that festival i was just like oh my goodness this is this is something this is this is something this is a world that i'm like i want to be a part of and that was a beautiful thing like i i think and i was just like and i was telling people i was just like have you seen <laughs> what they're doing and i was going around telling people you know and, and 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 then i started doing more you know more of the dive um but that what what the beautiful thing about it was what led me to you all was not so much of like you know the noise or whatever but it was more of it was art art led me to the nouns Welcome to Zero Rights Reserved, a podcast about nouns, DAOs, NFTs, Ethereum, and more. I'm your host, Jody Hawk. My co-host today is Joshua Fisher, and we are about to be joined by talented artist, musician, and potential nouns collaborator, Mr. Ed Balloon. We hope you enjoy this chat. All right, let's get into this because we only have Ed for a little while and uh, you too, Joshua. So I want to make sure we get a chance to dig right into it. Uh, so Ed, I always like to start off this uh, podcast by digging into the person uh, before we get into all the things that, that person has done and will do. Uh, so we'd really love to hear your story and a little bit about your journey as an artist. I'm super excited to have you on the show and uh, I'd love to hear your, your sort of origin story if you would share it with us. Oh, thank you so much. So, um, yeah, I am Ed Balloon. I am a musician, uh, creative director, visualizer, pretty much all the things an artist, um, which is able to like give you the general sense of what I am or what I do. Um, Ed Balloon is is a band, um, so it's made of two. Uh, my my bandmate Dave Chapman, uh, who is also part of the band, but he's more of like he takes the the the, the back and I'm usually the the face of it. Um, but yeah, I've been creating music for about 10 years, um, or even more or longer than that really, but I would say professionally for like 10 years. Um, and I guess if, it, if, we're, if we're talking about how I got into Web3, um, or just even more so just like my, like the journey of my, uh, with, with my career, just like how for music going into like, you know, uh, screenwriting and even that from like, you know, or just like uh, visual art. Um, it really started mostly from the, the 2020 era. Um, and I say as an era because it was like a really compactful year. And I, I think it was a real, a huge reset or for a lot of artists, I would say. Um, you you and, were in your pandemic era? Is that what you're... I was, I was in the pandemic bag. And um, I think we, it, we were left with a lot of artists, you know, I came from doing music and then there was this formula of like, okay, well, you know, you have this album coming out, moved to LA, did the move to LA. Okay. Now you are about to go on tour with the album coming out. Great. The tour was supposed to be in 2020, you know, about 20, 20, like 20 shows, 20 cities. Great. You're going to, this is what you're going to do. And then, you know, uh, leverage that and, you know, continue want to follow that and, you know, uh, continue want to make your name and, and brand from there. Um, but 2020 had other, you know, and other, uh, another path for me. Um, but with that being said, we were forced, um, and I was forced to like really think of, okay, what can we do? Like, you know, it was also a really tough year um, not only when we're talking about just, you know, as for artists, but it's just like humans, right? People, um, people were dying from COVID. People, unfortunately, you know, I would say specifically black, you know, black bodies were being slain. It was just all these things that we were still seeing. And I just remember um, as a musician, it was so very difficult for me to make music. And it was also very difficult for me to like see um, during this time as well, we were having like people doing um, IG 
shows. They were doing IG shows because the concerts were canceled. So you were seeing like these IG shows and I was just like, okay, this is kind of difficult. Like I'm not, this is not really the experience that I, uh, you know, that it entertains me as someone that likes to go to performances and things like that. And so um, that was something that I, I thought about when it came to creating um, a, 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 an experience um, when it comes, uh, you know, when it comes to like dissecting like this experience with like digitally. And when I had this idea, I was just like, okay, how can I have like a really good say performance um, that will be in the realm of like, like the digital realm. And that was where Edby the Puppet came about. And when Edby the Puppet came, I was like, yeah, like, I, I don't think maybe I would be able to like really um, uh, have the storytelling come across the way I would want, want it to through, you know, uh, the way I would want it to digitally, but maybe if I had like a puppet, you know, uh, and, and, and stop motion form or whatever, um, uh, maybe if I had it in that, in, in that form, then it would do that. And I got the idea from watching like a Wes Anderson movie. And I remember like seeing it for like the first time or not even the first time, but like really seeing it and dissecting it and saying, oh, this, this medium that he's using, like this is something that is like really cool and it's so real, but it's kind of real at the same time. It's like this, it's it's um it's almost like almost there, but it's not. Um, and that was something that I just loved. And when it what, came, what to, movie you know, was it? Was it fantastic, fantastic Mr. Fox or some other movie? It was um with the dogs. Uh, I keep forgetting. Uh, oh, uh, I forget the name of that one. That was amazing. Yeah, that one. Um, and 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 so that was the movie. Um, and then I also saw um, Fantastic Fox, and I was like, oh, I can see why. People will keep saying because I was, I didn't watch that movie until after, um, mm. but now I can now I totally understand what people what people were saying because um, that movie was also incredible. Um, but but yeah, it was it was that medium, and I was just like you know blown away, and I wanted to like you know be in it. I didn't know anything about it, um, but it, it's weird. Like God has his, his way of like working things out. So I'm like in this music industry, like I'm in this you know. It's all music. It's just music, writing songs, everything's music. And then I have a good friend and I'm talking to him about like, you know, he's doing this, we're doing our check-ins and stuff like that because of the pandemic and it's what we're doing. Um, but I'm talking to him about like, what's, you know, I have this idea. I'm like, I've been writing, you know, I took some screen court, screenwriting courses in college and stuff like that. But, you know, so that really was- you, like, you mean you took that advice, you took that advice to heart and you were checking on your friends during COVID? Because- <laughs> Some people yeah. did that better than others. But yeah. It was really um, important. I had, some, I had some good people checking in on me, and I and I also did the same. It was um, it was really important and, and also necessary. And I think a lot of times, especially when it comes to like those, as you know, a lot of us as like musicians, we were like, "What are we doing? Like, what do we? There's not like tours are canceled. What is happening? Like, is it all like you know? It was this huge reset, and no. I feel really like when people answer. talked. When people talked a lot about COVID, they always talk about restaurateurs and some of the other people that were affected really greatly by COVID. And of course, that is really sad. And, and lots of, mm -hmm. you know, really great restaurants went under and whatnot. But I feel like people don't talk about, you know, the performing arts and like musicians and how much that hurt you guys. Because, um, you know, anybody who knows anything about music and, and Josh knows a lot <laughs> and he could probably weigh in here too. But like, it's all about the tour, right? Like, that's how you guys well, make and I your think bread. That kinda that's kind of where it was like, like a, a lot of, um, a good amount of the time or like prior to, um, no one was talking about that. No one was saying, Oh yeah. Good amount of the money that artists make comes from tours and shows. No one was saying that until pandemic happened. And folks were like, Oh, streaming is not enough. <laughs> what are we doing? And then, you know, like, and, and so that conversation, like you were forced to have it because, and the industry was forced to have it because they were like, oh, yeah, I, I guess, uh, you know, if we don't have the tours, like like if, we, if the tours aren't happening, then the artists aren't really getting, you know, unable to have sustainable living. And and, and so this was the whole thing. Uh, like, OK, maybe we should figure out the streaming things. And it was more of this artist. And, and that was kind of one of the huge, like a, a big reason why I came to Web3. Like, it was more of this like, I'm so done with the system. I'm so done with like trying to follow this formula and, and, and follow, um, all these things that don't really have, that won't really produce like the results that it would want anyway. Right. I'm working so hard for 
the system that at the end of the day, it might help me. It might do these things. And so, um, and, 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 and regards to like Web3, like finding that was more so of just saying, okay, this is a tool. This is a place where I can showcase my work as well. And I can be a part of uh, this bigger, bigger conversation about trying to figure it out for artists and, and ideas and not having to like restrict ourselves um, for the sake of, you know, following a, a system um, that doesn't really, that I don't know what it is. It doesn't really exist what it exists. Um, and, 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 and so, so to the point of like, you know, with, with Ed be the puppet, like we were able to like do skits and stuff like that um, prior to get, coming into the web three, but I already had like the digital presence of like Ed be the puppet and all that, like that PFP that I have was already my PFP with the puppet before I even knew what web three was. And so when I came into web three, people were just like, Oh, I like your PFP. And I didn't even know what PFP meant. <laughs> I'm like, what is a PFP? <laughs> right. and, and, and so, so like, what oh, it stands cool. for is it stands for pro file <laughs> photo. Why is it three yeah, words? It was, that, that's what <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> and I think prior to it was Avatar. So I'm like, okay, PFP. It, it was a whole language thing that we had to change and stuff like that. Um, um, but. Um, with, with that being said, like I came into the space and I already had like things with my puppet and, and, and things like that. And um, even though I was a musician, um, you know, I I was kind of already toying with this medium of like, you know, um, and I was working with a team, um, an animation team, and, you know, they were just getting their start. So we were like, oh, like, you know, kind of starting with this this, this medium. Um, and, uh, and, and, but, you know, like I had this puppet. And, and so when I came into the space, I was like, oh, like, hi, I'm Ed. Um, and, and, um, and I had this, this stop motion puppet, which look, I have my life is and people were like, oh, this is so cool. Like, what are you doing with this? Are you going to make any jobs and stuff like that? And then I also have my music and I was like, okay, how do I, you know, present myself in a way where people know that I am not one, just one, I'm not doing one thing that I'm doing many things. And mm-hmm. even with that even being said, right? Like, Coming into the space, I didn't even like drop suddenly, like right out the bat. Like I saw the space and I was taking it in, and I already saw like the needs of like what, like I saw what the things that it lacked, and I was like, okay, how do we make sure that this is like a place where it it can like how do we fit, fill these lacks? Like how do we fill these voids? Like the things that it needs, and I, I started running the BIPOC space with um, Brittany Pierre and Patrick Wagner. Um, which we were like pretty much running for like a good year or uh, close to like a year and a half, and 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 that was like really was that time. was that Web three centric or was it just more about uh, artists? Yeah, it was, in general? It, was web, it was pretty much all Web three. So it was like okay. it was Twitter Spaces, and um, what we saw was more so like these bigger stages and you know visibility for artists of color and marginalized artists. And so my whole, the goal was to really- Were you doing Clubhouse back then too, or was it just all- I didn't do Clubhouse. I missed the Clubhouse era. I came right in the beginning of- Me too, me too. Came right in the beginning of the Twitter space, the Twitter space era. And I'm, I'm, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm here. This is something I could do. I, I, I'm used to the UX, wasn't used to the UX of the Clubhouse. And that's Mm -hmm. probably why it wasn't able to get me. So then, Uh, so then you're an expert in Twitter spaces. So we can ask you to rate our Twitter spaces at the noun square. How how do we do out of 10 compared to all the Twitter spaces? You guys are pretty good. I think you guys are really good at, uh, at being uh, an hour. Um, It's, it's so crazy because I think in 2021, People were on Twitter spaces for God knows. It was like, like four <laughs> hour average spaces. <laughs> hey, we did the first anniversary of Noun Z. We did a 24 hour long space without stopping. It was crazy. See, that's that's power. Like we were doing, and it's so crazy because I think we also were like, oh, it needs to be an hour or whatever. But like we were legit doing Twitter spaces for like five hours and it will be constant the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. And it was so crazy how much we had. It was just excitement. So you, it was probably you a lot want, of fun though. We got like, we had <laughs> so, so much. So Ed's excitement. coming on TNS. <laughs> Ed, Ed's coming on TNS spaces. And he's like two hours. What is this shit? <laughs> right. What? Two hours. I can do it. This, I can, talking about, this is long. <laughs> this is the short one. I can do it. Um, I always think it's really, but it's always dope. Like a, a Twitter space is uh, usually a successful Twitter spaces uh, or X space, however you want to say it, like call it now. 
um, you just for you, as you as a host, you want to make like you definitely know if it's successful or not because you want to make sure whatever you like whatever content that you need to get into that that space is is being given like you like like it's being shared because that's kind of what you want people to get from that space um, and and if, if that's what you're trying to do I mean so if you're able to do that then you are already pretty much at ninety percent there and um, I think a lot of times too is more so of um, I, I, like that was it too, right? Like I came into the space not knowing I was going to be considered a community builder and a host, but instantly that was what my like my title was. And I was doing all these spaces, but what I definitely learned was how to interview people and how to you know ask the questions um, that aren't, I would say, um, they don't wild feathers, but also can lead to a really authentic conversation. Um, and can lead it to a place that does not regurgitate information that was already out there. I think a lot of times when um, people interview people, especially now in this web space, because we're like, we've been here for so long. Um, and if you're interviewing someone that's been in a space for quite some time, you kind of ask the questions um, that maybe they've out, you know, they ask the same questions versus like doing research and stuff like that. So I was really good at like doing research. Um, I still do that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you, you know, I, I doing research and like asking questions that I feel like maybe kind of outside of the space or, you know, doing things outside of this, but also add, you know, to them and what they're doing now and what they, what they're trying to do for the future. And yeah, I, I think that's, and so I feel like you guys are pretty much good with that. You know, I, I also think, um, when it comes to like, uh, your space, um, it's, it's really good. You guys are really good at like, um, still giving the the like the fundamentals because a lot of I, I think there are probably like really new listeners coming to the nouns you know s- spaces a lot and so people just trying to figure out oh what are they what are they doing what are they about and so i think it's really good you guys are really good at like giving okay this is what we what we do and this is what we're doing and these are things and then other things right like when it comes to like just other conversations and stuff like that so you guys are pretty good with that so i i i i, I actually really do enjoy that nice Awesome. We'll I have take a question um, <laughs> around like your your creative process. You know, I think something that you said a little earlier around you know that that pandemic time and, and that it was difficult for you to make music. Uh, I know a lot of musicians who experience that same kind of uh, experience because there's a big community in the communal aspect to creating music and a collaborative aspect and, and like being in the room with people who might fill in some of the gaps, whether it's producing or writing or singing or some of these things that you might not always naturally do. Um, did you find that to be like a challenge or was it more of like a, a lack of inspiration at that moment for you? Or, or like, how did that work? And, and then following up on that, like how does that creative process translate into like what you do with animation? Yeah. So, um, it was honestly the latter. It was me going through this whole, because uh, I, I, I really, when it comes to like the process of like me writing and stuff like that, I, I, I'm, I'm really honest with my work and you have to really be honest when it comes to, I would say music um, of like how you want to uh, approach, approach something. And, and, and so when it came to like, you know, approaching music, um, I, I just felt like I was in this place where I said, I'm, I'm like regurgitating what I said already. Mm-hmm. Like I already said these things. I already said, you know, if we're being honest, like it was just like where the world was. And I was like, I already said that these issues were here. I, like, it's not going to do any. I was like, it's, this is not going to do what I wanted to do. It's not going to make people think and have the conversation. It's not going to make people want to change or whatever. I did this already. And but before, to your point, Ed, some of you just said a few minutes ago about our space is that we, we do spend a lot of time on the basics and on re-educating people who might be new coming in. And I think that's a good point to what you just said now is that like sometimes you, as an artist, you might feel like you're regurgitating or you're saying the same things, but maybe you're saying the same things in a new way to new people. And that's valuable. Well, too. that's why Ed be the puppet came. Because like, and so Ed be the puppet was supposed to be legit this character that was just going to like you know showcase my performances digitally whatever it wasn't supposed to have this like talking or this narrative aspect to it um right but i saw myself in this place where i was like man i have so much to say and i can't say it Mm -hmm. and so this medium came where it was like man this puppet 
I want this book to say all the things I can't say. And I want it to be sarcastic as fuck. Can I swear on here? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as sarcastic. And I want it to be honest. And I want it to be like to, to laugh. And I, but I still want it to like have joy. I still want it to dance. I want it to have all these things. Uh, because I feel like sometimes, to be quite honest, as a black man, I'm not able to be all these things. I'm either to, mm. have to be this aggressive dude or I have to be, you know, someone that's overly sexualized or I have to be someone that's, you know, quiet or I have to be. And I can't be maybe all these things because I'm human and, and you legit humans are one thing. And and that's pretty much has been my, my journey of just saying, yo, we are so much. And so when it came to every the puppet, I was like, Oh, he's going to be all the things that, <laughs> that I'm not able to be. And, and so, and that was kind of how every the puppet came. I, I, I legit came from a place and it was a, a weird place. And I, and I, and I, I really shout out to my bandmate, you know, Dave and just people, my team for like saying, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go this way. Cause you know, we like, like it weird, man. Everybody likes yeah, weird stuff. It's, it's like, but it's going to be, I'm like, cause, and I think that's what it is. Like for me, um, and that's why it's, it's one is very difficult for me to like kind of, uh, when people say, oh, what do you do? I'm like, man, I'm just an artist uh, and I'm everything in it because I really try to, you know, I, I get visions and I get ideas and it's more so like me just trying to story tell. I just want to get the story out. And and it's okay. And I'm all, and I'm all about finding all the ways of doing that. And, and every the puppet was that. And that was the And it was just like that right moment in time where you like connected with the puppet, like the people who created the puppet, you said they were kind of starting at the same time. So like, it was just yeah. like right place, right time. Like yeah, you had this idea. Honestly, it, honestly like, it was because here I am, this musician talking about like what I was like saying was I'm this musician talking about, you know, doing these things, dabbling and writing skits and stuff like that. And then, but I, I was like saying, trying to figure out like stop motion and claymation and all these things. And then I, I'm talking to my friend who was like, well, I actually have a really good friend who is a, an animator. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, link us. And he was like, and he was like, okay, what do you want? And I was like, I want a puppet that looks just like me. <laughs> and <he was> like, <laughs> okay. And, and you got it. And you got it. And he got the puppet. <laughs> and um, they were like, what's the name? I was like, Edby the Puppet. And, 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 and that name was instant. It wasn't hard. It was the easiest name. Um, uh, and, and, and it made sense. Like, I didn't even know he was a puppet. Um, how puppet came about was because in stop motion, like a lot of times they, they call them puppets. And, um, and how big and is this so, thing in real life? It's not that big. It's, it's a uh, man. I wish I had. It's like, like action figure size or, or like, no, it's bigger than that. Um, mm, maybe this big. Is no. it a okay. Is it a marionette or is it uh controlled on a stick or how does it work? It's, it's a silicone puppet. So it's, um, so it's just stop motion. It has like the, a different uh, articulation, uh, and like the, the, it's not marionette. Mar marionette. Um, that that was not what I was going for for this. Um, and I've seen those. Those are cool too. Um, but this yeah. this one is more like you you have to um, you have to, it's it's stop frame. So each one you you move. So like you it, oh, it you it's move uh, it. gotcha. the way how you make it. It's um it's still able to like move. Um, and so, but that, okay, that, yeah, it's like yeah. a rigid, like a rigid model that you can kind of move. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'm gonna make a super weird Canadian reference here, and you probably won't get it, but in Canada, on Much Music, which is basically our our equivalent of MTV, there was a puppet called Ed the Puppet, Ed the Sock, sorry, that was huge in the '90s. And I I'm gonna look up clips and send them to you because it's really Ed quite, the sock. it's quite. It's pretty crazy because, like, when you were talking about how you wanted Ed to be this, like, sarcastic incarnation of everything you couldn't be, that was basically Ed the Sock. By the time you see this, hopefully I'll have long since disappeared from society, living on a private island like Howard Hughes and married to Destiny's Child. Yes, all three of them. It's my island and my laws. Fuck. He was, like, this, like, sardonic asshole, and he would, was like, Ed interview the, the musicians. Man, that's crazy. Because, I mean, I don't know if I know Ed the Sock. But I do know someone I I used to watch wrestling when I was a kid, and there was yeah. this dude I forgot his name, but he had like this sock, like you get the sock out, <laughs> and then he like, and I, that's what kind of like I, I don't know, what, or that's kind of off, but that was the example that I got from it. Um, yeah, did Ed yeah. the sock have eyes? I'm gonna at all? send you a clip of. 
Yeah, he was like a sock with eyeballs and he like with an angry face. I'm trying to picture him, but he would just interview these celebrity interviews. I feel like I've and he seen would just it. be asshole an asshole to them and they would just be like they'd take it because he was a sock. I really but feel if like it was I've a person, that. they would have been like him. I, I don't know if it ever because I know MTV and Much Music sometimes did some things crossways, but I think this is very like deep Canadiana. But I'll send you the clip and you're gonna be like, wow, this is really coincidental. It's kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was that was pretty much Ed. And um and and but I also wanted to showcase, um, and because of creating it too, we were also like prior to the space, we we're trying to make it into a TV show. And as you know, when it comes to like you know doing things as a TV show outside of the space, just doing it in general, it is a long process, and it can get all the love because people are just like, "Oh, this is a new, crazy new idea," and then instantly all that love can go away. And that's kind of mm -hmm. what happened. Um, and so, um, but. What I also wanted to do was create this, uh, you know, space for for a black character in animation and in, in this world that I feel like there's so little of. I think there's way more um, now than there was ever when I was a child. But you know, I think there's that the one with there being more um, I, and it it being the normal thing, um, it being just in the world because that's what we we all live in this world. So why not see all these things, um, right? And and, and 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 so yeah, like um, that puppet really was, I would say, something that, and I I still believe in this puppet. Like I was the one. It we like when I was at my lowest with the puppet, I was like, oh no, this puppet is gonna be something. I have to, you know, you have to keep pushing it. Um, and it was, it's, it, it gets very difficult because sometimes we don't have that same vision as you. And um, and so when I came to Web three, I was not, I was afraid. I was like, okay, I'm not sure if you're gonna get this or gonna understand this. Um, as well as my music, right? I think for the longest time, I've always been, uh, one thing I've, I think have uh, has always been consistent with me has always been, um, what is this? That's what it is. It's like, oh, we haven't heard this before. And it's not always a good thing of like, we haven't heard this before. It's always like, okay, this is, this is kind of cool, but we're afraid to support it. We're afraid of this or whatever. And it's always me trying to like have to, prove something or have to like showcase like, Hey, I am a range of things. And, um, I think for me, um, I, my, the reason why I really lean into that more than, uh, than not leaning into it is because I know what it is when you don't lean into it. Um, and I've seen, you know, other artists, um, sacrifice, um, um, their artistry, um, and their well-being for the sake of just trying to appease something that they're more than. And I think it's good for the short term, but is it good for, you know, when it comes to longevity? Is it good when it comes to, can you go to uh, go home at night and be happy with yourself and, and, and feel like you have purpose at the end of the day? And there's a lot, there's a lot of balance to that. And when it comes to either being fi like adding finances and things like that, but this is where it comes. I think it's where it comes in with Web3 too, is just like long term and, and really having vision and really seeing like, okay, well, my, we're probably not going to get it in the first week or the second week or the month or whatever. But if if you keep at it, especially when it comes to like building culture, right? I think a lot of times two people are just like, oh, it's going to happen over overnight. No, it's not. It, it absolutely is not. And I tell people all the time, absolutely not. Hip hop didn't happen overnight. You know, this, you know, and, and I, and if we're trying to be as honest as possible when we're talking about movements, these things didn't happen overnight. They were legit built. Um, and, and, and it required people in alignment of just like, what is the bigger purpose here? What are we trying to do here? What are we trying to tell here? We're still we're building, right? Like, what, we're always building. Well, <laughs> wow, I haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> we're we're okay. clearly down bad because. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this in such a long time. Oh man, God bless the space. <laughs> but yeah, we're still building, y'all. Um, but um, let's talk yeah. about the let's talk about the web series a little bit, if we can. So um, you had this, you had the puppet created. You started sort of using him as an avatar even before Web three. Can you talk a little bit about that process? And then maybe we can yeah. go from there and into the now. Yeah, proposal. and so um, pretty much what, what happened was I always... So we had a script already done where Ed be the puppet. Um, and, and so when I did my run Ed collection, and it's so grateful, thankfully, um, I was able to use the funds to um, bring that, that script to life. 
Um, and, and so that is the pilot short film that we have. And so when it came to uh, the nouns, like, you know, coming into the world of the, of the nouns, I actually went to, um, and so, you know, I, I, I've been working with uh, Chris Walters. I'm just like, you know, he's someone who I came across with in the space. Um, and he invited me to the Shorts, Shorts Festival. And, oh, amazing. Yeah. And I've, I, have y'all seen the, the content from that? Oh, yeah. I watched that live, man. It was great. I watched the, I was the live there. stream. But yeah. So I was there. And so we, me and my band, maybe went, uh, we didn't know what to expect. Um, and, you know, to be quite honest, sometimes, too, you're like, okay, you know, I think a lot of times in Web3, um, and, I, you know, you know, I know Chris, and so I know he's always going to bring it, of course. Uh, stupid buddy, they always definitely bring it. But I think sometimes when it comes to Web3, like, you know, you're just like, okay, are you, is the quality there? Are we going to do this? Because I think sometimes we, we there is this, uh, um, there is this, like, you know, barrier to that. And, and so when I went, and I saw this festival. I'm telling you, me and you know my my bandmate Dave Chapman. We were like, oh, oh no, this is people need to know about this. People aren't allowed it. Like we, like I shouldn't. Like I just came off of this off of an invite. I should have knew about this before. Like I, I should have been <laughs> running to Chris and saying, yo, you need to let me end, end these doors. Like experiencing that festival, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is. This is something, this is, this is something, this is a world that I'm like, I want to be a part of. And that was a beautiful thing. Like, I, I think, and I was just like, and I was telling people, I was just like, have you seen <laughs> what they're doing? And I was going around telling people about now. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen the good <laughs> word of the, of the nouns the hell? You know, and, 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 and then I started doing more, you know, more of the dive. Um, but that, what, what the beautiful thing about it was what led me to you all was, not so much of like, you know, the noise or whatever, but it was more of, it was art. Art led me to the nouns, you know, and, and, and I think that's, that's the goal, right? Like the, it's the goal is like to use the, the nouns RP and really get it out there. And that was something where I was just like, oh man, this should not be, you know, it should not be secluded to us in the bubble. It should be really out here. How do we find ways to do that? And so when I was just like, okay, I am making this project. Oh, this would be really cool for this collab of just like, incorporating this too because i already see like i like chris um walters i incredible person um just how he even structured it um there was stop motion and i mean it's stupid buddy you know they they are lovers of stop motion i am a lover of stop motion so maybe there's a bias biasness there but it was not only stop motion um but it, it was big, fan of big fan of robot yeah. chicken you know i'm a huge fan of stop well watch i'm a huge fan of every mostly everything with stop motion because the thing about stop motion is <laughs> it takes so much time for you not to, you know, for it not to be good. Like you, it, even if the, it, you can, like, even if the stop motion that isn't as good or whatever, it's just so much time to it that it's still good. Like, and, and <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't put it out. Like you, like you put so much time into it that it still needs to be like, it has to be good. Right. And so, um, yeah, that's true. The bar is I mean, high yeah. then. I eh? The bar is the bar is pretty much high um, when it comes to it, um, the, but you still have to really do. Like I, I think there are people who are like, mm, <laughs> and, it, and you can kind of tell. Um, I, I I understand the the you know someone who is not who doesn't like do the animation, and, but you know understands the time and you know when it comes to like you know coming up with the um, the ideas and the visions of things. I I totally understand. I do feel for those who are doing it, and I know it is very difficult to even like, you know, copy something and, and to get on screen and to really like tell that story. So my heart still goes for all stop motion animators. Um, you know, you will always get my praise. Um, but with that being said, I'd yeah, like to ask, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Maybe we can ask, maybe we can ask Joshua. I'd love to know what Joshua thinks about the story you just told, because Joshua was on the team that actually coordinated the Short Shorts Festival. So how does it feel for you, Joshua, being one of those team members and, and seeing that it literally noun pilled someone as talented as, as Ed? No, that, that's amazing. And I think that, you know, that was that's the goal for, for me and, and for the Noun Stories team is to, you know, work with amazing animators and keep going up that stack, attracting you know, the Ed Balloons of the world and, and the stupid buddies of the world and, and saying like, 
this is the type of property that you can come and just like have fun and just like create, you know, whatever you want with and, and like use these characters, however you feel is interesting. Um, when we first started that project, it was supposed to be 10 animations and we had like five that, you know, our team was going to, uh, wow. try to commission. And then we had five that we were going to use, uh, prop house for, and we just got so many amazing submissions that we ended up increasing, you know, to 10, 10 of the top 10 of the prop house ones. And, you know, all the people we reached out to the reception was like really, really positive. So we ended up getting a couple extra that, you know, we reached out to. So it was like a, a really good experience. And to hear that, you know, you were able to come and, and feel that energy and see the quality of those shorts and be inspired to then work with nouns, I think. Is it also like was the, well the curated. Thing. It was really well put together. Um, that was, that's also important. Like I think, to, and I'm, I'm going to like, you know, I'm throwing all the flowers because it was really in it. I don't, you know, if I, I give credit where it's due, I, you know, I'm not that much of a hater. Cough, cough. But like, <laughs> no, no, seriously though. But like, I give, I give credit where, like, I, I really feel like it's due. And when I went there, I was just like, I didn't know what I was expecting. I legit, I was like, okay, I'm supporting the homie. Let me go. And when I came out, I was just like, oh, I'm so happy. Like, I was like, thank you. I was like, thank you so much for making sure that you are setting the example that we want because there's a lot of eyes. Like, a lot of people are dismissing Web3. It's, you know, all these mm -hmm. things, right? And, and so, to be bigger than that and to say, hey, this is where we came from. This is our, you know, this is our, you know, our founding grounds. But please don't, you know, don't think that we aren't able to put out quality work or don't think that we're not able to like see or curate things or whatever. That mm -hmm. was also something telling. And it was like, thank you so much for like really putting this in and, and saying that. And then we're like, there were people that were not only Web3, uh, you know, that were in Web3. There were people that were like there that came and were like, wow, this is like, I'm blown away. This is amazing. And I just also, um, before I told you, like, I, I just also want to say, like, I felt this weird community, like people like, oh, they don't understand this, but we're doing, we're doing, we're doing shit. We're, we're, you know, I felt that from that. And that was something where I was like, oh, now, this is the I not a about. cult. Definitely not a cult. <laughs> it's not, it's not a cult. It's a movement. And I just want others to see I that know. as well. I, I think. Um, a lot of times people may say, oh, this is a cult or whatever. No, it's a movement um, that, you know, the goal is to have people that the, the bigger goal is to say, hey, this is what well, we're just trying to express ourselves. We're trying to put the story out here. We're trying to do these things. Um, and it's hard to have a cult when there's no leader. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know that's, what? Chris Waters must have been so. Chris Waters must have been so happy because, you know, when you're like showing the homie a song that you really love and you're like holding your breath, hoping that they like it. And here you are. You're like, Chris, this is amazing. You must have been his best night ever. I know. I, I'm actually feeling that right now. I'm like, oh, man, I hope they like the song. And if they don't, well, it is. But, yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm sure. Yeah, Chris was definitely happy. I was I think I was happy for Chris. I was like, man, this is or oh, y'all. The nouns. I was like, this is um, I was one just really mad. I'm like, this is what y'all been doing this whole time. And I didn't know about this. Like, I where was my invite? Like, I should have been involved all this whole time. Like, you know, like, I think that was why I'm like, what? what? Like, and I, I was kind of, I, I get really mad when, at those things. Cause I'm like, I've been here too long to not be knowing like what's happening. Like, I, I kind of know what's happening in, in, in these pockets. Right. And so when I, when announced, when that, when I was brought to me, I was like, I'm, I'm really mad that I'm just finding this out or like I'm just seeing this, but it's okay. I'm well, here now. But you know, it's kind of interesting because it's like, if you're not really paying attention or if you're, if you're paying attention to, on the surface level, you're seeing, you know, nouns, NFT selling for, you know, 35, a hundred ETH, whatever they were when, when you started looking. And, and I think a lot of people see that and they say like, Oh, okay, well this really isn't for me. Can, like I, I'm not, I'm not interested in, in, you know, that type of transaction without like realizing that there's like multiple layers and there's like all these other opportunities to be involved with, you know, the project and, you know, I, even the CC zero, you know, aspect of the art, I think kind of goes under the radar in, in some cases where it's such a interesting like moment. And, and I, we talk about CC zero a lot and, and I don't know that it's right for every project or, any, or anything like that, but for nouns, I think it's really interesting. And like, you get to just like tap into this like energy source and all these people that are excited about a, a thing 
uh, in an authentic way without having to ask anyone. And I think that's, there's just something really unique there. Same. I, I think that that is a narrative that you guys have pushed to that. Um, but I, I, you know, but the, the beauty of it really for me was seeing the storytelling, um, mm. from like the artists. And I think that's why the CC0 works. Um, going to Nouns Dow, I mean, the Nouns, Now the Shorts, Shorts Festival. And then also like after that being like seeing the things that Nouns have been doing. One thing I do love is like not compromising the art just right? Like allowing the artists to tell the story. Like that's, cause that's, I think a lot of times, um, that is the friction that we get. It's like, oh, are we able to tell what we want to? Are we able to do? We are able to do that. And that was what I saw in the Shorts Shorts Festival. Like that was just artists being able to be artists using this IP. And, you know, I think that's the brilliance of these, that's the brilliance of these noggles too, is that like, even though it maybe wasn't intended at the start of the project to be the signature of the project, at least not, you know, explicitly, that's what it's become. And now like artists can use that in their art and immediately it's like, it just clicks and they can still have their own creative direction and they can still have their own aesthetic, but there's just something about it. A great example of this is Nouns, a movie. I don't know if you've looked into this at all, but there's a group from Atrium that are literally making a a full animated movie about Nouns. And the aesthetic is nothing like Pixel. It's more like gritty, more like uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. It's it's kind of that feel, but it's still very Nounish. And part of that is like the use of the of the noggles and being being able to tie it together. And I think that'll be that'll be the case for you too, because obviously, you know, stop motion is not necessarily a pixel art. <laughs> but as you saw with uh, the now story, some people did some really amazing stop motion uh, animation that that included the noggles and it was very nounish. Yeah, I mean I think it but I saw, you know, puppets being made, right? It was it's all those things. It's uh it's it's doesn't it doesn't have to stop just there. Noggles was actually one of the first things I knew about the nouns, though, because I was like, "Oh, there's some dope glasses." So, it, you <laughs> yeah. know, <laughs> when I first saw, it, I thought, there. "It's," I'm like, "Oh, this, these are some dope glasses. This, these are really dope." So we're I, gonna I, send I, a pair of these, sending a pair of these to LA for you. Thank if you. You don't mind, Doctor. Can I have one? I, I think I want them in. In blue. Damn, it's really hard to know what color. Like, how do you guys go with? You're frozen. You we got them color? in blue. Uh, those are his are the Salvinos. These are the designer Italian ones. I can't send you a pair of those, but those ones those Wait, ones go for like. So how many? There's different. There's different kinds. Is there like? Yeah. The yeah, most expensive. So we were talking about this before before Joshua got here, and I said, no, 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 wait, we'll talk about it on the pod because I think it's a really good example of like CC zero and funding. You're putting them together and seeing what people can do because there are many different versions of the noggles. So now he's wearing okay, the fun noggles that we talked about. Those, those are Mike Clem. Ones. Those are those are costume okay. meant to be worn at conferences and stuff. The ones that I'm wearing were made actually by Motivate Me from Cryptodes uh, for the Cryptodes meetup at N- uh, NFT NYC 2022, I think. Uh, and so he made a bunch of these. And then Salvino is, is somebody who got funded by the, the DAO to create um, basically designer shades. Those are the ones he's wearing right now. Italian made, like they come in a nice case and everything. You got to mint the NFT and claim them. Uh, what are, those these are, are the Bud, Bud Light. Light. So, these are the Bud Light ones that they made first. Wow, he, he really came with all the noggles. That's amazing. Wow. So those are Bud Lights. Those were actually made in conjunction with Bud Light when they did our the Super Bowl ad last year. Um, what else? There's uh, there's c- cardboard ones that have been made for conferences and stuff, so they fold out and you can give them out to people. Actually, I think I have a pair here, maybe. Here they are, Tony. Uh, I think I want one of them. Oh, there you go. These um, are like the, the lo-fi novels. And, then and, we and now, have, just like, this week, just we this week, there's a, a cohort in... Gold. Yeah, from from different colors, the gold ones. That's a flex. And then just this week, there was an on-chain proposal from the community in Japan, and they're making some different colors in like a Japanese style uh, that are going to be passed out to the Japanese nouns community. And finally, I think this is the last one that I can think of off the top of my head, is there's a group in Brazil that are actually taking recycled or taking waste plastic and recycling it and making these multicolored noggles out of a mold. Uh, so it's all, you know, post recycled plastic, uh, and those those are really cool too. Um, Tony, what's I have a version called? Precious, you may, you may have never plastic. seen. They're okay. like they. Uh, this is like a, a I, like 
hooks on oh. to your regular oh. glasses. I thought you were joking. Where did those come from? I thought you were joking, too. Oh, my God. These are, these are like some Fitz frames. Like, uh, this is just like a, 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 a prototype that we never ended up that's pushing the button amazing. on. All the way. That, that's, that's like literally, you know, prescription noggles. I didn't know they existed. So Fitz, Fitz frames is something that Joshua Fisher has been involved in since early days of nouns, where they actually have paid for uh, prescription glasses for a lot of kids in the U.S. that can't afford them, funded by nouns. It's a super cool initiative. That's, well. yeah, that's now, the story. Is also funding a um, like a, a vision uh, mobile vision clinic. So there's a, a group in Youngstown, Ohio, that's building out like a box truck, and it's going to have like the box truck is going to be like all like noggles. It's like, going to be like a huge pair of noggles, and and like uh, it's going to have like all the equipment on on the bus to do telemedicine and and really be able to visit, you know, yeah, the documentary, right? Like, yeah. I don't know if that's, yeah, they should info. Be. you should be in a have documentary. Have you seen, have you seen, have you seen like uh back backstage footage of the documentary since you're, I haven't seen this? anything. I just know it's happening you and know I know it's going to be alpha. good because I will, you have alpha for me. No, no. I, I thought you were giving me alpha. <laughs> No, I just know it's gonna be good. I don't. I, I. I. And I know it's being made, but like I just want to make because this. This is like, I'm just telling you every time I have like, I, and I think that's why you know one of the reasons why I keep going is like you know and your show and stuff like that is because I'm like I just always end up learning new things um, about the ecosystem that you all are in. It's and, a really, it's a really deep community, and, and I, I will say like that experience to me really highlights you know something that I wish we could do a better job of is telling that story because there is this narrative of like, you know, lack of accomplishment or, you know, wasting money. And, and I think that there's so many interesting things that have been done and so many people that have been funded to do interesting, creative things I think, um, that aren't yeah, really think told. It really, it really does suck because the ones who are building, don't have a building, right? They're not right. yelling. And well, there's no PR through. team. There's no you marketing know? And, department. There's nothing. Yeah, like that and, and but you know, those who are like kind of prevalent in the space and stuff like that, people like me and stuff like that. Like when I saw this, I'm like telling people, I'm like, y'all, do you know what the nouns are doing? Like, do you see what they're doing? Um, because it's so easy to say, oh, no one's making good quality. I, mm -hmm. I, I like, I'm like, no, you haven't seen what the nouns are doing. Like that, that's quality. Like you can't. You know, there's, there's there's people like that care about quality, so it is weird. And we're paying, um, and we're paying for it as well. Like, the, like one of the things that was really important for us. Is well, you have to, to like you, you, you know. Well, like, but but no, like, no, I, you I think you, like, you just make like, it for us out. It's good for your exposure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that well, that's like a. I, I think that is like a very big, you know, trope that we, I'm sure Ed, you you know, face that many times in your career where somebody's like, oh, I have this amazing opportunity for you with this gigantic company with tons of money. And by the way, you can do it for free and you get the association. And like that happens all the time. And, and, you know, a lot of people look for that, but I think something that we push really hard for, especially, you know, for now stories I can speak about is to, you know, really fund animators fairly so that they can feel like, you know, I'm getting paid what I would always get paid in a professional setting. And I'm getting this, you know, creativity, this freedom of creativity and like ownership of the product at the end. Like, I think that all those things like make this opportunity kind of unique. There's so much. Well, there. this is a good time maybe to ask uh, Ed, because I've been wondering about this exact question. But is it true that you that it, you can't eat exposure? Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Um, I've been, I think people, you, heard you, you know, I've been on this awesome diet because the, you know, <laughs> the amounts of times people have asked me to do something for the sake of exposure. I'm like, wow. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 a uh, it's really unfortunate. And, but you know, and it, it really does suck because, um, you always know, artists are going to go where artists go. Um, people don't understand that. They don't realize that. But if an artist is treated well, that artist is going to say, Hey, this place is about, you know, um, uplifting artists. Um, and uplifting isn't only about, yeah, like for the sake of like work, buying work or, you know, putting them on a, on, on a platform, whatever. But it's also making sure that the artist is able to be the artist and is mm -hmm. treated as that.
And I think a lot of times artists aren't even treated as artists. Like we're treated as, okay, we can just have them do a commodity there. Or something. Yeah, and then dismissed, right? And 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 so you see the nouns, like this ecosystem that you guys have built where it's, like when I went to the Shorts, Shorts Festival, I was like, I haven't seen anything like this where artists like coming together um, and, and they built this community where it's like, oh, this is what we're doing. This is what we're about. We're weird. Um, and we're pushing this narrative and what we, and the nouns are behind this narrative and, and, and the narrative is just like, yo, we're just trying to like get out there and we're doing all, you know, and that is a dope thing. And I think what is also dope about it is there's different ways to approach it. Like you have, you know, those who are like really like just based with like illustrations, stop motion, all those things. But then you, Joshua, as you were talking about, like people who are like legit building products, like, and I think that is what I'm talking about. Like, this is where the movement is, but it's really difficult if you're not going to have, it's really hard when people are just saying, oh, you only spent, I think in this space too, especially with this bear market and stuff like that. And, you know, after like recent events, it's like, oh, where's the money going to, or what's this happening or this and that. And it really does a disservice to the people that have been doing things and keeping, you know, the nouns agenda at the forefront. Right. And, and not, you know, because They've been, you guys, you guys have and still will be doing the work, like as in building things and, and, and doing these events that are not thought about and, and getting people just to see what's going on. And, and so for me, um, like I'm all about that. And, and I know there's a lot of noise and stuff like that, which is unfortunate, but there's also those who, you know, um, who see this, who see y'all and care and want to be a part of it. Um, and, but I, 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 and, and so like, even what you just showed me and, and, and like, I didn't even know all those layers to the glasses, bruh. Like, I'm just like, man, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is, but it's, and it's, it's, it's global. It's global. Like, yeah, who said, like, not everything's global. You know what I'm saying? Like global and permissionless too, because nobody put out an RFP and said, we need six different types of plastic novel noggles for all occasions. Like that never happened. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like right. we need one for every day of the week. It was just like, yeah. here's something that people might want. And people just came and they built it. And some of them got, and I just think it honestly, it's but... just, and I just think honestly, at the end of the day, it, it gets, it still goes to the same thing as we always say, short sighted and long term. Right? Like those are able to see long term. Like it doesn't yeah. just happen over like in a day, but, like I have been in the space, you know, for close to like three or four years now. And it took that one event to really hook me in, like, and say, Oh, Oh, this is what you're all about, you know? And right. Like imagine if y'all stopped, if y'all stopped maybe like six months before, then I wouldn't been able yep. to be expo uh, exposed to that. And so maybe yeah, I that's a really good person. point. The, but, you know, the, uh, the pod that we just put out uh, today was with Chris Carella from uh, Purple Dow, and he's super oh, wow, involved yeah. with Far with Farcasters. That that just went live on our on our Twitter and YouTube and podcast feed today. Uh, but yeah, one of the things he saw is that trying to get me into Farcaster, and it's been very difficult for me to get into that. So, <laughs> I'm yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's a little what's heavy been difficult for, sure. for you. I'm curious. Um, so I'm not really. I don't. I don't really like having wallets on my phone. Um, I'm really like keep all those things off because of the you know, but now oh, I'm just gonna so make just a like just make a burner, I, just make a burner for forecaster. Then. That's what's gonna happen. It's, yeah. it's gonna yeah, happen because I want because I want to I want to see you guys are exposing me to like that. I've been in the nouns thing and y'all like forecaster wolf. I'm like fine. Let me just let me well, go so, in. And so Chris Rainbow is super Rainbow involved in now. Both good for mobile. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we love the Don. We love the, yeah, I was just going to say, Chris was saying on the podcast that when he first started talking about nouns uh, in Farcaster community, he's like, of course, these people are going to know about nouns. They're like Ethereum OGs. They're people who've been around, you know, Ethereum since the like pre-sale days. Uh, how could they have missed nouns? And he's like, nobody knew about nouns. And he's like, now they do. Thanks to Purple Dow being a nounish Dow. And thanks to a lot of us talking about nouns nonstop. Thanks to DWR getting noun pilled. Uh, he's the founder of Farcaster and talking about nouns a lot but before that like people just didn't know about nouns and sometimes when we're in we're inside the bubble we're like of course everybody knows about nouns just to your point about how we can't you can't stop uh the proliferation because you don't know when you're going to find those people well it's same with me like i'm in the bubble and i'm like oh, of course people are gonna know who i am because i've been out here and people still don't know who yeah. i am sometimes and i'm like oh okay 
that's good. That, that, <laughs> now it's, it's it's definitely a humble thing. It, it humbles stay, you. So stay, stay humble. <laughs> stay it's humble. Like, it's, it's like really billions of people on this planet, and there's like millions of people in in like you know the entertainment world, and and you know I don't know how many millions or hundreds of thousands that are like in Web three and like. You just and there's always people cycling in, so it's like you know people don't know who gigantic you know movie stars are sometimes and stuff. So it's oh, like yeah. you just can't ever take that for granted. You just have to keep going and keep pushing. Absolutely, and so yeah, that's absolutely. just pretty much what it is. Keep going, y'all. We gotta keep going because we got we got work to do and we got we got a goal to to attain. Yeah, let's let's talk about this proposal. Uh, we'd be yeah, remiss so- if we didn't. We've got proposal three seventy two nouns x ed balloon featuring nouns in the stop motion animated series uh, was sponsored by Brennan, a uh, pretty OG nouner, and it goes live on September the 21st. So by the time this is out next week, it will already be live uh, and probably in the middle of voting. So anyone who's you know voting right now, maybe they're watching this next week and they might want to hear from you, what's the deal with this prop? Here's your opportunity to talk to them. Yeah, so pretty much this prop is to include the nouns um, – Nouns well into the I'd be the puppet world. Um, my goal is to really make it a central character into into this n- these next two episodes. Um, we have the first pilot already done, um, and it's really trying to in- incorporate it into the storyline. Um, I know that was like a little bit of a, of a talk. It's like, oh, how would nouns be in there? And I I don't see it making any sense of it not having a central part into in this world. Um, so one to have clear um, to be clear with that. But um, my goal is to, if you if you if you read the, the proposal and, and seen um, clips of what we already put out there as a proof of concept, um, uh, my goal is to you know um, bring conversations regarding diversity or issues um, you know that I've faced you know and others have faced you know in this world, but using the vehicle of satire and comedy, um, things that I you know I, I I would say have influenced that is you know a lot of the uh, shows on Adult Swim and things like that of that nature, where it's just more of like, you know, you have the funny and it's there, but the deeper message is there. And it, it, it requires us for people to think and, you know, just to have that conversation. Um, but we use the... You, you, you laugh first and then you cry, right? Is that- yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's crying, but it is this thing of like, you know, I always tell people when I grew up, you know, I grew up kind of kind of poor, right? And but one thing that we always loved was laugh. Like you know, the lights were off, but we were able to tell, tell a joke and stuff like that. And that comedy is so huge when it comes to like you know always seeing the bigger picture and 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 the hope and things and stuff like that. But it, it also does let you know like okay, how do you uh, send this message or or have this conversation? Um, uh, and, and, and make it accessible to someone that may not really understand it or isn't willing to have it, right? And so sometimes you're able to cater it or, or put it or box it in a way where, okay, maybe humor, uh, uh, can do that. That's another conversation for another day, though. But in regards to doing that, that, that's what is my, my whole, my whole goal with, uh, with Ed B, the puppet, um, and, 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 and the series that I'm, that I'm creating. And so I would want the nouns to be a part of that. Um, with that being said, um, we are just asking for, um, when it comes to funding, 400K um, uh, for the first phase. Uh, we broke it into two phases, the first phase, um, and then another 400K um, for the latter phase. And that's just to incorporate all the things necessary to make this happen. Um, stop motion is not the easiest feat. Um, it is very difficult, um, but I love this medium. Um, it's, I say it's, it's like, I, I understand I am biased because I'm in it, um, but it's something, it requires a lot of time. It requires, you know, a lot of direction. It requires a lot, you know, uh, there's, when it comes to motion, there's a lot of things where you like, it's really hard for you to go back and do it again. Um, so it requires a lot of attention. Like a lot of times we're just like, oh, it's, it requires all those things. And I'm sure the nouns. So you, um, you can't really fix it in post is what you're saying. <laughs> you have to get it right. Like you pretty much have to try to get it right every single time, and so you really want to make sure that when you're you're doing the sketches and the writing, that all of those edits happen before you really go to shooting, um, because it will be detrimental to like you know the shot. And you know, I'm we're having a landscape being built. It's all these things, um, and my goal is to you know um, create this world, and you know not only that, but to to get it out there. Right, I I want to be able to pitch this to like 
networks and I want to be able to like get this into festivals. Um, I don't think, you know, as someone who has been exposed to what you all are doing and someone who has been, you know, doing these things, I just feel like it makes sense to just, you know, be out there and, and also help. And we're all trying to get, you know, the, the goal is trying to get our voices out and, and, and have people see what we're doing. Why not do that together? I, I think we're bigger in numbers when it comes to these things. That is what I'm proposing. I, I do hope that uh, I, I, I get the support uh, to have this pass. And I and I hope, I understand that the the, the DAO, um, the community has been through some things, but I know y'all are very strong. Um, and I so far I've seen some things too that I've been going through and, I, and it's, it's, it's good. So it looks like you guys are back at it. Um, and yeah, I just want to be able to like, you know, continue on to keep the ethos of nouns and, and if anything is expanded, um, to, the world that, you know, Let's do it. Let's do it, <laughs> to the world, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I know. And, 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 and so, and, 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 and yeah, I want to be able to get, to get that opportunity. And so I, I do hope, um, that I, I find folks who are also in alignment and want to see this happen. Awesome. Man. So. So I know you don't like to name drop, uh, but I think we should do a little bit of name dropping. A couple, couple big hitters in addition to yourself involved in this proposal. Uh, first, we've got our friend Seth Green, who we all know and we especially know here in the Nowdiverse because he's also involved with Stupid Buddy and what they're doing, uh, well, what they did with the Rose Parade uh, at New Year's and what they're also doing with the documentary. Uh, so he's going he's gonna to be involved in this, correct? Yes. So Seth Green is already um, in the – Stop motion um, is already my pilot. Um, and he was someone who uh, spread the script and was like, oh, this is incredible. Um, and, and and so when it comes to that, yeah, like I am trying to, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of name dropping um, because I'm always just like the quality should be there. But, you know, if that's what people need to, to like, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think, you know, it, with a guy like Seth, it is fair to like, when you have that type of comedic delivery and that type of comedic history, yeah, like th that kind of speaks to like, it is a quality piece too. Like every piece of this puzzle is quality people and it attracts quality people. And like, you can expect like, if, if you told me it was me doing the comedy, I don't know. You know, do I have the, the comedic oh, it's also, chops? It's like also a, I don't know. I don't think so. It's but also a cosign. Like, like, you know, but yeah. it's a cosign. It's a cosign, you know? You know, For don't sure. play me. I was one of the writers on this, but like, <laughs> um, but no, no, definitely. Um, and, and, um, we also have David Diggs who will be the executive producer. Um, and, no, and I'm, um, I'm a huge, I told you this on spaces, but I'm a huge David fan, huge Hamilton fan. I saw Hamilton on Broadway last year and kind of became nice. obsessed with it. I listened to it all the time. Yeah, yeah. David's, David's probably my favorite, uh, musician in, in, in the entire musical. So I'm super, super pumped about that. Yeah, he's actually on, I think he's actually on tour now with Clipping. He has a, a, a dope rap uh, trio. I mean, well, he's the, nice. he's the forefront rapper. And then, you know, uh, uh, he has... I, I'm team guys. Alexander, but I but I still appreciate, you know, Jefferson for, for his abilities, you know? Well, I'm team, team David all the way, um, <laughs> no matter what. Uh, from Little Mermaid to you know, blind spot. It's all, all the things. Um, he's just an incredible person. Um, and he was actually yeah. one of the first people, um, that saw, cause I used him for like the, like a smart, one of my skits that I had with the puppet. And he was like, I love this. Let's do it. And, and so, um, he was like one of the first people to like really believe in, um, what I was doing with this, um, with every puppet. Awesome. Yeah. That's, a, that's always that, are... that great feeling, right? Like when you, when you get to, like share something with somebody that you really respect and, and they are into it and they love it. And then they're like, not only are they into it and like it, they're like, how do I get involved? Yeah. It's, it, it was, he's like, yeah, that was what it really, what it was. And, um, you know, he's, he's so big and he's so huge and everything like that, but it's really incredible how he's still like so humble and so nice. And so, um, such, he's just a really good friend. Um, and dope. He's, he still believes in, you know, uh, he, he, he's helped me so much and um, he believes in my work as I believe in his work and things he's done. And he's definitely kicked down doors for, you know, the weird artists, right? Like if he's, if, if there's anyone let's, who let's I- keep it weird. Yeah. If there's anyone who I respect so much when it comes to like the typical, like a black weird dude who is out here doing the things that people probably say that, you know, you can't, he is one, one of them. And- I am, 
I'll rally around him any chance I get because he's such a he's he's so incredible. Like I don't think my words words are not are not enough of like how incredible he is. I, like and I know it shows on the stages and and in his work, but that's just a little bit. Like he as mm-hmm. like a person deep down, he's really incredible and, and and so he cares so much and and he does so much and and he's so busy. He's so busy and right. he still finds time to like you know figure it out. So he like. I, I, I just, I'm just saying, so thanks for him. One question that a few people have asked on spaces and whatnot and in discussions about this prop uh, is how do you, how do you see integrating sort of the nouns culture and or aesthetic into this piece? Have you given that any kind of thought? Yeah. And so I think it's more, one thing when it comes to this question is more just like, I, I, I think sometimes people are like, oh, do you just think it's just going to be noggles and things like that? And no, I really want this to be a character in, the, the the film um when that happens though you want you need to write a part for it so you need to write a part for the for the noun and and i want to make sure that all these things i have like all these things like i i'm able to have access to all the things necessary so i can do you know what i want um with the nouns but the nouns i, I you know i am uh very when it comes to vision uh when it comes to like what i want it be the world to be it's not really on the nose i i would say uh uh to a lot of people, if you if you're used to like the weird, I think nouns is weird. Think of it weird. It's, weird. It's, just, it's, it's weird. It's gonna be weird, and it's 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 still gonna be and it's gonna be comedic. I just, I you know, I, I'm an artist, and I don't, I'm not on the nose. So please don't like. I, I think sometimes too people just want the uh, how are we gonna use it? And well, I would say so. There's gonna be a nouns character. Um, there's gonna be noun ca- nouns characters. There could be an army. That's all nouns. I need to know. That's all I want to know. <laughs> I'm so yeah, I think like the, the main thing I think people kind of get hesitant about, and I think you kind of cleared a lot of that up is like, you're not just going to like throw, you know, noggles on some character and keep it moving. I, this is actually, and an I, I want to be clear with the, that. Like the noggles thing, um, I, we were using that just because people wanted to just say, okay, how can a noun be in there? Yeah. I, you know, I could have just easily put like the IP of a noun in, you know, but that wouldn't have done it. You know, it wouldn't really still. Put, bring the visuals to like mm-hmm. for you to be able to like see like what it is um but to be quite honest it doesn't make any sense for me to just use a noggle or whatever like to be right. i probably would stay away from that to you know to to be quite honest because just using these one things doesn't really move the plot if well if we're being honest mm-hmm. we're trying to take it from the like the writing the writing um from a perspective of a writer how is that moving the plot of what i'm trying to say or, or, or tell it's just what for scenery i don't really need i need more than that and so, right, like I need more than just right. for scenery. And so the noun, I'm here like, okay, that, that was when I, when I came to where it wasn't like, okay, I need to, how can I use this noun to tell the story of like what I'm trying to tell? It wasn't, oh, how do I use the novel? Like it was, how do I use the noun, like the culture of the noun? Okay, find a noun. Maybe I make an army of nouns. Maybe it's just this noun. Like this, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's. but I can't, you know, I can't just get in, in a proposal. And I'm also not trying to restrict myself when it comes to like, okay, how I want to use the nouns. I want, it's it's CC0, so please allow me to like, you know, use the noun. But just know that a noun will have a central and I'm trying to be as specific right. as possible. Right, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We, be- we believe you. <laughs> right. That's awesome. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate it, though. And I, and I think that the question is is there. Um, I, I get it. But as just also just trying to be an artist that gives me the way of just like, okay, I don't have, because I think when you put things in a proposal, people want, are going to want to see like, okay, it needs to be exactly that. And so what I'm just saying, it, it's going to be. You know what I feel like? Part. I feel like yeah. we're like asking our mom, like, what's for, what are we getting for Christmas? And she starts giving you more <laughs> right. hints. And then eventually you feel like you're about to find out. You're like, okay, okay, okay. I don't want to know. <laughs> Surprise me. Yeah. But I just want to like say that. And I think it's a good question. Um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely want to like let people know, like, it makes no sense for the nouns to not have a central part in the world of Ed B. Um, because if it has a central part in the world, then it's able to move the plot. And if it's able to move the plot, yeah. then that means it's able to be in all the other episodes if we're able to sell this, uh, you know, and that is how, you know, like, do you, do you see, like, it, it can't just be, oh, yeah, I'm just trying to make this, trying to get money from the DAO and just make this to say, oh, yeah, we have this, to, to just do, it doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. Um, it, like, the, using the noun IP um, really is to also help expand the world of Ed B. The, Ed B. the Puppet. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. The, the only thing I, we didn't get a chance to sort of dig into is, is I really wanted to talk about uh, Run Ed Run, Ed Run 
uh, which I, th- I thought is a pretty cool project. And I'm uh, wondering if you could tell our viewers about Run Ed Run, because I think it's really interesting what you're doing. Yeah, Run Ed Run um, was an incredible project that I came up with. Um, and it was really, you know, the showcase, there was a lot of layers to it. Um, it was to showcase me running from Web 2 into Web 3. But deeper, yeah. it was more so of like me running from um, boxes of people always trying to put me in. And, you know, you're running until you get to this place of, oh, I don't need to run anymore. I am where I want to be. But, the you know, the surface of it was, oh, Ed B is running because he's late to his audition. So I was trying to tell a story within a small, you know, a small clip. You know, I think it's 15 or 16 six seconds, uh, maybe maybe like 10. Um, but of, of that. And I, I was trying to get all these messages in there. And it, it incorporated, you know, stop motion. And it incorporated 2D. Um which is also going to be in, you know, the actual uh, uh, pilot uh, as well. And, you know, um, if the funding um, funding goes well, goes through and everything like that, it will be in the, the coming up episode as well. Um, but it's 2D in there. There's sound, there's music. I want to really showcase the world of, like, what I, I'm trying to do with Ed B. the Puppet. And, and it was minted, um, right? Was yeah, like and it thousand, was minted. A thousand, a thousand um, sold. And then from there, we were able to, like, you know, primary sales that went to, funding the short film and and then um secondary sales went to buying art um from marginalized and um artists of color in the space is that the, that's the ed balloon generational wealth fund correct that's the general um, ed balloon awesome. generational wealth fund and so Amazing. um Amazing. we've been on a pause bit because you know we gotta pay taxes but we'll be back at it um <laughs> Why, the government you know, is always getting the way the government's always you know, in the way of generational wealth isn't it i gotta pay taxes on on things so you know uh we just you know uh I, you know, as as someone who is also trying to, you know, help the space, I also got to make sure that I'm taking care of things because I'm not trying to go to jail. Um, but with, <laughs> but yeah, and, and, and so that's the project, and it, it did pretty well. And I, I, you know, I still get hit hit up some people, and they're just saying, "Wow, this is like incredible," you know, piece. Um, Gary V got some, and that also, you know, sparked a um, a conversation with um, us later working collaborating with each other. Um, with the my with my job that I just did with him recently, um, and so um, I think the beauty of it is also like, and that's it, it's also where it comes with this time, right? Like when it dropped, I, I don't think a lot of people were like expecting that and were ready, but like I, I see people coming to me today, and like wow, this is like I love looking at this in my wallet, or when they see it at like IRL events, they're like this is I, I can't stop looking at this, and I'm like, man, that I'm glad that it does that. So it, it really is a beautiful thing that it stops people and people are able to take it in and um, it, it's, it's a clip too. So they just keep watching it and watching it and watching it. So it's, it's awesome. Amazing. Well, Ed, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Thank today. you so it's much. Super fun. I feel like we were like off the rails and a little bit, uh, you know, unhinged. It was a dope conversation. Way. Let's just say that it was a dope conversation. And um, I don't know, like when is this, this goes live like Monday, you said, yeah, I'm going to push. We have a couple in the can, but I'm going to push and get this one out next Monday because I know it'll be a lot more impactful for you and for the Dow if we put this out while your prop is up. So I'm yeah. going to try to get it up uh, next Monday is usually what we shoot for. And then the prop will just have started. So uh, people will hopefully be able to tune into this pod and, and hear you talk I like, about I like, it. Y'all, I, like, I like this. I don't know. I like this so much. I'm not going to say I like it more than the, the Twitter space, but I like this a lot. <laughs> You're allowed to like both. You're allowed to like both. But yeah, no, I like, I, you I know, like, we've been experimenting. Keep, keep coming through the spaces too with us. I want to keep coming. Yeah, we've been experimenting I like this, with I like the, the pod. Spaces. We've been experimenting with the pod now for almost two months as uh, sort of a way to push into video and try new things. And I, you just the conversations you can have here face to face are just different. And the spaces is yeah, great. it does something with facial facial expression does yeah. something, I guess. Um, Even with the noggles, you know. I like the, with, and that's uh, what I'm saying. I like the noggles. I guess my only question know. with the noggles is how is it when you like how is how is the seeing? Like is it good with the seeing like with with three yeah. pairs it's a little hard to see, but <laughs> yeah, these ones are fine for the most part. I mean the the these ones are actually pretty good, like because if you can see there's like the section where your eyes are is actually pretty clear. Oh so, wow! Yeah, I, I guess know, even though these look like really like from here, they look like you know you want to be able to see through them. There is like this the w- the way that they were designed. Uh, Big Shot Toy Works made these. I mean, you could see right through it. It should be. This is an idea. Y'all should do a lookbook of how, and I mean like a lookbook, but yeah. with like, like all the different ones. 
all the different That's ones. Fun. Like, like, we have some really good pictures from like, but Zanio like in cool too, ways, like, right? Like I, I see. Can like, we make it? I can see we like make a it retro, like Sears catalog, Sears catalog yeah. in the nineties? That's make funny. Ones like this. With, with well, the maybe, but like I see, like I see a way where everyone's like on the beach, like maybe kind of like sissy yeah. style. I don't know, but everyone's on the beach and they've got those like the glasses that you just had on Joshua, and they're just like on yeah. there, like laying. And I can you like you see it like you take like a drone picture or whatever a little bit closer, and you just have to see these nongos and like everyone on it. That's I think that's, that'd be dope. Is this your so, like, next project, like that. Ed? That's your next. I mean, that's your I don't next know. Project. Like I'm just saying, like I have ideas. I just think I'm I a know. photographer. Let's do it. Let's throw, <laughs> throw the prop up. It, this anyway. is it's it's dope. This is I, man, yeah. I, I love the nouns. Look at me, y'all, y'all, me, y'all, y'all, y'all be you. loving this, 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 uh, this movement. Um, well, we gotta yeah, get thank you some nouns so at the crib too, so you can wear. Yeah, them can y'all can y'all send me some? I mean, all of them. I'm gonna send you a pair. I'll send you a pair. Which ones do you want? Blue or red? You gotta I like choose the, blue. So, or, I, blue are nice, but red are canonical. It's up to you. Yeah, the the red one, the red ones are the historic ones, right? Like. Yeah, they're more like that's the logo and stuff, right? Like, uh, oops, why am I moving that direction? Like, like, like a rug. Like Nanny clock here. Yeah. Rugged. Man, you got a rug. You know what also should be happening to? There's a Pepe gallery. There should be a noun gallery. Like, that's just a thought. Y'all should start thinking about that as well. You know? There's, there's, there's a been really some talk good one recently. In the Central Land, but not a physical oh, nice. location yet. Yeah. There's like, been a I lot mean, of talk so, recently about building a nouns house, like a like a hacker house where people can come and build, and maybe we can have part of that be like a gallery or something. So yeah, I think building like, something like that in Rio or in New York or something like that. But the thing is, is that like a lot of people just like do the Pepe art. It's so crazy. Like even your rug, there was a Pepe rug, and I was like, so when I saw that, I was like, man, there's a there's a there's a rug with the noun. And I was like, so there's probably a lot of Pepe rugs, but we're not talking about shit coins right now. Nah. We're talking about actual rugs. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I like you guys. I, I forgot you were uh, the pun man. I'm surprised I didn't have many puns on this on this podcast. No, uh, we're very serious. We're very serious <laughs> on zero rights for sure. But I'm, right, I'm gonna let you, y'all Ed. go. Super, thank you so yeah, much. Super exciting. Thank you. I appreciate and best you. Best of luck at talking as Tody in the future. Good luck this week on the vote. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna need it all. <laughs>